Welcome to this video on Advanced View Settings in SharePoint 2013. Here we'll quickly review basic view settings, describe several advanced view settings, and comment on the interaction of views, columns, and web parts. There is a companion video on how to create a view, and we suggest you view it first if you haven't done so yet. In the Daily Reports list, we have a view called High Temps on Sunny Days. It contains only those reports when the weather was sunny, and it's sorted by high temperature in ascending order. Let's review and modify a few of the simpler settings for this view. Click the List tab and Modify View. If you wanted to delete a view, you'd use this Delete button. Let's keep working instead. We'll leave the view name and the web address the same and not make this the default view. This list contains 27 columns, but only 9 are shown in the High Temps on Sunny Days view. Let's change the view by hiding the division and last name columns and adding the Low Temp column to the view. Let's also reorder the columns so the low temperature is next to the high temperature. Since the high temp column is 6, change the low temp column to 7. Let's save the view and review the changes we've made. The division column has been hidden, the low temperature column appears next to the high temperature column, and status is now next to the contract number. Let's continue to use the high temps on sunny days view and review some of the more advanced view settings. Click the List tab and Modify View. Scroll past the sections we just covered. Tabular View turns individual checkboxes for each row on and off. The checkboxes are turned on in the view as you see here, and you'll find them useful when you are working on multiple items or files. But if you want to hide the checkboxes, unselect the option and click OK to save the view. Here's an example of how that looks. Let's modify the view again and restore tabular view to its previous value of checked. The totals setting displays the results of calculations at the top of the columns. For example, a text column such as title can show the number of rows in the list. All number columns can have a count, average, maximum, or minimum, and some number columns, such as low temp and high temp, can also display a sum, standard deviation, or variance. Click OK to save the view and see the results. Let's modify the view again and restore the totals to their previous values of none. There are several style options that control the appearance of the list or library. I've set up some shortcuts so we can look at them quickly without saving and modifying the view each time. The default style varies depending upon the type and configuration of the list. Here's the default style we've already seen with the daily reports list. The basic table style removes the checkboxes and is similar to the tabular view. The boxed style places a border around each item and labels each property. The columns are left to right across the top of the list. Click the title to edit the item, or scroll to the bottom of the list to see the option to add new item. The boxed style is only available for lists. Boxed no labels differs from boxed in that the properties are not labeled. And like boxed, it is also only available for lists. The newsletter style hides the checkboxes and presents each item in a row with a gray shaded row between. Edit and add options are available. Newsletter No Lines removes the checkboxes and places each item in an adjacent row with alternate gray shading. Edit and add options are available. The shaded style displays the checkboxes and presents each item in adjacent rows with alternate yellow shading. Edit and add options are available. The last style option is Preview Pane, which lists all items on the left. As you hover over each item, its properties are displayed to the right. Click either of the two titles to edit. An add option is not available. Folders should only be used in libraries, so we'll cover that in a minute. 
Item limit has two options. The first restricts the number of items displayed per page. For example, limit the daily reports list to three per page if you want a compact display. Click OK to save the view. To see the next set of three results, simply page. The second option restricts the total number of items displayed. For example, limit the daily reports list to a total display of three and save the view. Now you'll see three items, but no option for additional pages. This option is useful if, for example, you want to limit items in a web part to the three most recently modified documents. NCDOT does not use the mobile settings, so do not change this last section. Now let's move to a document library to review two settings that apply only to libraries. This library has two folders. The first folder contains five files and the second six. There are also four files that are not in folders. Click the Library tab and Modify View. Scroll to the Style section. The Document Details style is available for most libraries. Click OK to save the view. This style displays each file with a border and labels each property. It includes icons for document type, an edit option, and an add document option. Let's modify the view again. We'll change the style back to default, then in the folder section, select Show All Items Without Folders to hide the folder structure. Click OK to save the view. You see a flat view that shows all files at the same time. This flat setting is extremely useful if you want to work around folder limitations, such as the inability to sort and filter. As you've seen, views control and customize the way content in a list or library is displayed. Another option to customize views is to create new columns. So far in this video, we have simply hidden or displayed columns that were already available in the list or library. But you can also create new columns. Let's go to a custom list with ferry routes and ferry names and add a new column for the class of each ferry operating in the Outer Banks. Go to the List tab and click Create Column. Here are the settings you'll need. The column name is Ferry Classes, and the type of information is a choice. Data is not required and is not unique. The choices should be Hatteras, River, and Sound. We'll display the choices using a drop down, disallow fill ins, and set a default of blank. Click OK to create the column. Now, when you edit the properties of a route, you'll see a drop-down where you can select the ferry class. Creating columns can be straightforward or complex, so it's the subject of another video. Our final customization option is to use and edit views within web parts. When you add a list or library to a page, you can use an existing view in the list view web part. We'll open a home page for editing, click Add a Web Part, and choose the Daily Reports list to add. Notice that the default view of all items was assumed. Open the List View Web Part for editing. From the Selected View dropdown, choose the Triad EDR view and confirm the switch. Click OK to finish editing the web part you'll see that it matches the Triad EDR view in the list. When you add a list or a library to a page, you can also edit an existing view within the List View web part. Open the List View web part again for editing. This time, click Edit the current view and click OK to continue. You'll open the now familiar page that lets you change view settings. And you can, for example, group by county rather than document status.
Let's save the view changes. And here you'll see the items grouped by county. Here's a very important note. If you edit a view within a web part, it does not change that view in the Lister library. Let's go to and refresh the daily reports list to verify this. We modified the triad EDR view within the web part, but it did not change the triad EDR view in the list. This also means that when you delete the web part, your customization is lost. Just like columns, it can be simple or complex to create and use web parts. Please view our other videos on web parts for more information. In this video, we've examined the advanced view settings in SharePoint 2013. You've seen the many options available to customize views to your needs. We encourage you to check out our other SharePoint videos, as well as the reference and training materials on the SharePoint help site. On Connect NCDOT, there's a link to help on every page. Go to the main help page and click SharePoint Help to see the SharePoint help information. On Inside NCDOT, there's a link to the help site in the header and footer of every page. Those links also take you to the SharePoint help site. For information on upcoming SharePoint classes, log into Beacon and check the LMS training calendar, or contact the PC Training Group. Thanks for watching.